Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is throwing out the imaging playbook with Apple Vision Pro. And our guests are Dr. Paul Murphy. He's a radiologist at the University of California, San Diego. And Steve Deaton, he is director of customer experience at Visage Imaging. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. So uh, let's start with introductions. Uh, Paul, can you tell us about yourself and about your work at UC San Diego? Certainly, I'm Paul Murphy, one of the radiologists in the department at UC San Diego. I am an abdominal and pelvic uh, radiologist, and I also serve as the vice chair for informatics within the department. All right, very good. Steve, how about you? Yeah, hi, my name is Steve Deaton, and I'm a director of customer experience at Visage Imaging. And my role primarily deals with uh, learning about what is of interest to our customers, who are frankly the greatest healthcare organizations in the country, and um, carrying that into something that's actually implementable uh, by our engineering squad. So I get to interact a lot about new technologies with great innovators like Dr. Murphy and, and his colleagues. All right, very good. And so one of the, the newest technologies to come along in recent years is, is the Apple Vision Pro headset. And uh, it was in introduced in January uh, of this year, and it, it's really c created, you know, kind of an amazing buzz, not only in the, the consumer electronics world, but also in uh, healthcare as, as people kind of take a look at what they can do with this uh, this headset. And, and it's even created a new term called spatial computing. Uh, Paul, can you t tell us a little bit about that? What exactly does spatial computing mean? Sure. I interpret spatial computing to mean embedding the user interface of the computer in the user's environment, both in terms of rendering apps and 3D objects generated by the apps in the real world surrounding the user, and in terms of using real world cues like eye and hand position in place of input devices like a mouse or a touchpad. And this is something that's maybe a little bit more sophisticated than maybe some of the other like AR, VR headsets that we've seen in the past, right? Correct. Yeah. Steve, um, spatial computing, what does that mean to you? Yeah, similar to what Dr. Murphy said, you know, a new term had to be developed because this device merges in so many unique evolutions. You, you have not only VR and AR that have historically been recognized, but you have these new ways of interacting, both without a peripheral device, your body is the peripheral device, but also in generating imagery that has never existed before, where we can actually trick the human eye into thinking that something to, uh, something on a 2D screen is actually in a 3D space. So it, it, a new term was really due. Yeah, amazing. So Paul, when did you get your hands on uh, an Apple Vision Pro and, and, and what were some of your first reactions? We started exploring the device and the app both soon after their release in February, 2024, and found the possibilities for both quite compelling. What are some of the things that really struck you first? There, there are a lot of aspects of the headsets to consider. Um, and, uh, you know, from the resolution and luminance of the display to the power, uh, the compute on the device, uh, and of course, to the ecosystem of apps that are available to use. And these all seemed quite promising for this device. All right, very good. Now, now one of those apps uh, was developed by Visage. And so, Steve, um, you you guys are pretty quick to launch a dedicated app for Apple Vision Pro. It's called Visage Ease VP. Can you tell us um, why the company decided to move so quickly on on this app, and and what are some of the things that this app enables people to do? Sure. Yeah. Um, Visage has been a long time uh, partner with Apple products um, for over ten years. Uh, our full diagnostic viewer has been available on Apple devices, ranging from uh, MacBooks and PCs all the way through their iOS and iPad OS devices. So when Apple developed another excellent device, it was just the proper continuance of the path we're already on to um, adopt that and look for ways to help innovate with that technology. So it was it was just an extension of the path that we've already been on as as such um, Apple supporters. And what are some of the things that Visage Ease VP enables users to do? Yeah, um, it tackles a lot of the items that Dr. Murphy indicated about spatial computing. 
Um, not only does it allow the user to experience our existing Apple viewing applications in a totally new way at a format that they've never seen. So um, we also are enabling users to augment their reality so they can be table side or patient side and have additional imagery available. But the real neat part is after that, you know, these these devices bridge a gap between interacting with hand movements and revealing imagery in milliseconds. Um, the response time on these devices is less than even the response time of a, a mouse or trackpad. So the user's experience with this was designed to be something off the charts right out of the gate. And we took that to the next level by uh, focusing on the 3D volume rendering. And so what we do is take the first way that a user can actually interact with a 3D recreation from a 2D imaging as an actual volume in front of them. Historically, all 3D imaging has been viewed on a 2D screen, but giving the user the actual access to interact with it at scale, at appropriate scale, um, was just too compelling for us. Now we can we can kind of sit here and I'll talk about how great this is, but I think a picture is worth a thousand words, like they said. So let's uh, let's take a quick look. As uh, uh, Steve, you brought a video that uh, we can look at. So let's take a look at that, and maybe if you can walk us through kind of what we're uh, what we're actually seeing. Sure. You know, as as the video shows right now, you're able to see a lot of different imaging but it's augmented in the space that you're in. You can see the rest of the room that the user is sitting in. And this is meant to just kind of demonstrate that you can take your imaging anywhere and you don't have to just have um, tunnel vision with a specific workstation. Um, you can have this around you while you're actually interacting with other devices, other colleagues, or the patient. Um, but this part right here is is really the the sweet spot for our application where we're able to take traditional 2D imaging and create a volume that the user can actually interact with. And you can see here the hands present in the image. And we, what we really want users to experience is just that live movement from when you're actually trying to rotate an image and it feels like you're dealing with something that's present in front of you. Yeah, that's why I, I paused it because you can see down there at the lower right, that's that's a, a a human, you know, interacting with the image by, you know, I guess pinching and, and, and manipulating it. So the person on... Uh, the person you with the headset on is actually manipulating this image in real time, correct? That's right. Yeah. And, you know, some of the work that Dr. Murphy does isn't just about how your hands interact with the application, but also how your eyes interact with the application. And we actually consider both the application smart enough to know if you're looking at the cut plane, for example, that it knows that you want to adjust cut planes. But if you're looking at part of the anatomy, when you um, use the hand movement, movement, it knows that you want to move that around or adjust the soft tissue density that's displayed. So the devices are quite innovative. Mm, that's really amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, Paul, seeing that video, um, are these kind of things that you have done with the uh, with the headset and, and app and uh, kind of how does it feel to have that on? Definitely. I, I, th I think there's a lot of interest from uh, radiologists and other physicians about incorporating headsets into their workflows because of the possibilities to view and interact with 2D and especially 3D representations of medical images in a more natural way, like Steve mentioned. And there's also ergonomic considerations. The, you know, when the only thing better than a standing desk may be no desk at all. Uh, and, and that's something that's facilitated by these sort of devices. Um, so I think there's a lot of interest in all these aspects. So now are you currently using the headset and app for clinical care there at UC San Diego? We're we're starting with the basics in, in terms of uh, evaluating whether you know in 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 research studies whether radiologists using the headset can visualize the sort of high resolution and low luminance features that present challenges for medical imaging displays. Uh, we're we're also surveying radiologists about their experience with usability and comfort of the headset and app after having used it for these uh, for these things. Uh, and also about their preference between headsets and desktop apps at, at for for several use cases. Do you foresee a, a time in the in the future when radiologists might be, uh, you know, diagnosing from from something like this? I, I think it depends on what we find, and a lot of, of it also depends on the vendors that 
uh, as in terms of whether they decide to pursue 510k clearance and uh, implement the sort of functionality and integrations that are necessary for particular use cases. But I think it's quite promising. Okay. Now, Steve, if you can maybe address a little bit how the Visage Ease VP app uh, can be used to interact with some of uh, Visage's, um, like for your, your Visage 7 enterprise imaging software. I mean, people can kind of dive right into that through the headset. Yeah, what's what's really unique about our platform is this isn't a standalone app. You know, this is just an extension of our platform, which uses the latest server side technology to deliver the most robust and empowered experience to the user, regardless of what device they're on or what their connectivity may or may not be successful as. So, um, the the main the main benefit is that we're connected to the back end, so you immediately have access to all of your patient jacket. Your entire archive is accessible from this device. You don't have to do some sort of porting or migration. Um, it's it's instantly available. And you know, even while we're pending concepts like will this be diagnostically um, sufficient, um, just the amount of collaboration that this device opens up, the amount of communicating data in ways that humans haven't consumed it before, it we really believe it's going to allow users to consume data more quickly and backing it with our server side rendering and, and streaming technology is just going to enable that to accelerate at, at the fastest pace possible. That's really what we're after is enabling physicians to use these devices, not just for diagnostic radiology, but for communicating medical relevance in faster, more accurate ways. So, Paul, um, one of the things that, that it's kind of um, coming to mind to me is whether these headsets could be used for for patient education. Like if I go in for a scan, uh, the radiologist could, you know, s slap one of these on my my head and let me explore my own chest or my own brain. Is that is patient education something that you see as a possible application for this? Definitely. I think radiologists tend to focus on 2D imaging, but there's also a lot of interest within radiology, as well as with our surgical colleagues, and certainly for the patients as well to understand things in 3D space uh, in a more natural way than uh, than you can if you're just looking at 2D images and have the training to think in those terms. Well, radiologists spend years looking at a look at the learning how to look at the human body in 2D. Um, so, uh, Paul, um, in the in the year to come, you know, we've we've just had this the access to these uh, headsets for the last few months. What things do you plan to do, and then for the throughout the rest of the year, and, and maybe you know what other applications do you see researching with these? Well, I think like like I mentioned, we're uh, we're looking at some of the basics like conspicuity of different features. We're also thinking about how we can use this in training residents uh, and helping them understand the 3D representations of different uh, anomalies and other other aspects like that eye tracking functionality are also quite compelling. People have, in radiology have looked into incorporating eye tracking into workflows and using it to study things like radiology search patterns for a long time. And I think these devices will help further that aspect of the field. Right. Steve, what can we look forward to from Visage in terms of uh, spatial computing in the year to come? Everything that we develop in our core viewing technology with the leading academic facilities around the nation um, is actually backed by our server side processing, right? And that allows us to deliver who knows what kind of imaging to this device. So I think as we get into body segmentation and, and more advanced 3D AI algorithms, It'll just naturally be an extension to display those in this device and and enhance the user's experience. Like Dr. Murphy said, you know that this device is going to allow users to consume data in ways they haven't before ever. Great. So so Steve, can you tell us uh, um, what can we expect from Visage with respect to spatial computing? What can we see for the rest of the year? Yeah, I think the most important aspect of this device is that it unlocks an immersive 3D experience that is really dissimilar from anything that anybody's already realized. It's not like AR, it's not like VR, it's immersive. 
when you're actually able to look at a volume and have all the perspectives be exactly as if it were real floating in front of you, and then you're able to interact with it with your hands live with no delays like you're on a 1990s computer, it unlocks such a different neural response. I mean, when we demonstrate this, it's very common for physicians to use terms like fascinating when they just have a, a two minute exposure to it, it's already that impactful. So I think what we're going to see moving forward is a combination of evolutions of, of what you can do in the 3D immersive space, but that's going to be so exciting because it's going to be driven by the brightest minds here that are just learning this as well. They're learning how to comprehend this sort of interaction that, with data sets that hasn't existed previously. So it's going to be a great ride. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's going to be great to, to see what develops. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Paul Murphy of UC San Diego and Steve Deaton of Visage Imaging. Uh, gentlemen, great discussion today. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, signing off for the Imaging Wire. My name is Brian Casey. Thank you.